morning everybody let's go let the chickens out I've temporarily stopped using our automatic feeder for the chickens because the crows figured out how to use it and every morning there were about 10 crows out here eating before I let the chickens out in the morning this has happened before I just need to stop for about a month of using the automatic feeder and then the crows will forget about it and I can start using it again for the chickens. So for now, I'm just giving them a little bit of feed every day. questions and comments about our rabbit tractors and the way that we move them and why we don't have them on wheels or some other kind of system that would help us to move them and I'll be really honest that moving these just the way they are not forward this way but sideways this way is so easy that I don't even want to monkey around with wheels this is just a really great design for us this is not too heavy for me to move and I don't struggle at all. So this actually works out perfectly for us. Another question that I get often is, how do you prevent the rabbits from getting their feet stuck when you're moving and how do you prevent injury? And actually the rabbits learn really quickly to ride on top of the wire on the bottom to make sure that they're safe when they're moving over. And they're excited when they get to new grass because it's new breakfast or new lunch. One of the reasons why it's been such a long time since we've done an update with you guys on the rabbits is because we no longer breed rabbits in the winter. When we lived in Arizona, breeding rabbits over the winter was the best time to raise rabbits and to breed them. And when we got onto the homestead here in Southern Missouri, we thought the same thing would be true. However, we learned some really hard lessons that breeding in the winter here wasn't as good of an idea. We actually lost quite a few babies. They froze, they got too cold. And without taking some pretty extreme measures in the barn where we were raising them, 
it's just a, a better idea for us to take the winter off. Now we choose to breed in the spring and in the fall. The summer gets really hot and while you can breed in the summer, it is very hard on the moms and it's actually hard on the babies. They really don't grow as much because they don't want to eat as much. The biggest update that we have for you about the rabbits is that we're going to be focusing primarily on building our herd of silver fox rabbits. We've come to really love the silver fox rabbits. Their temperament is amazing. Their body size is nice for meat production. They're a heritage breed that is both used for meat and for fur. We don't know much about tanning rabbit hides and that's something that we would like to get into and learn much more about. And these silver fox are the perfect breed for us to do that. So here soon you will see our transition away from the New Zealand Californian crosses and more toward all of the silver foxes. We actually will be giving our New Zealand Californian cross herd to another homestead YouTube channel that is just near us. We're gonna be giving them to Lorella and Chris from Not A Farm Girl, A Homestead Adventure. So look forward to seeing maybe a video from us when they come and get them or at their place when they receive them from us. So I wanted to give you guys a quick update on how the bees are doing. They've made it through the winter uh, it looks like they are thriving. Uh, our whole goal really was to just get them through the winter. Uh, we're still learning about bees and uh, we're, you know, we still have a lot to learn. But we got them through the winter and that was the main thing. Right now this tree behind me is flowering and the bees, yesterday, you, if you were 30 feet away from this tree, all you heard was bees. They're just everywhere. Uh, it's a little windy today so they don't seem to be quite as active today. Uh, but my gosh, they are just everywhere on the homestead, which is great. Uh, even if we don't get honey out of them for the next couple of years, uh, they'll be great for the gardens. They're going to be awesome pollinators to have around. Now this tree, this is the first year that it's bloomed since we've been living here, which is, this will be our third summer. We're not really sure what this tree was. In fact, I almost cut it down over the winter because we were going to clear some of this area but now that it bloomed, we're thinking maybe it's something good to have around. If you guys have any experience and might know what this is, let us know. Uh, the two things that I'm kind of leaning toward is that it could either be a wild cherry tree or a wild plum. But like I said, this is the first year that it's bloomed since we've been here. We'll see if anything develops on it into the summer. Let us know what you think it might be. We have the silver fox rabbits in our orchard area right now. So I wanted to talk with you a little bit about how our orchard trees are doing. When we first moved onto the homestead, planting fruit trees was one of the first things that we knew we needed to do because they take so long to produce. This is their third spring on our homestead and they're finally starting to do a little bit more than just survive, I think. Most of the work so far has been underground and now this spring they're really coming alive. We have 10 fruit trees on the homestead right now peach, apple, crab apple, pear, cherry, and plum. And this spring, both of our peach trees had tons of blossoms. It's the first time that they've actually bloomed on the homestead. One of our apple trees has a few blossoms and our cherry tree has two tiny little blossoms on them. While we know it's gonna be still several more years be before we get big harvests off these fruit trees. It is really nice to see their progress and that they're getting bigger and more mature every year. Well, the spring garden is doing really well. We just wanna show you quickly the things that are coming up. We've had some great successes. There are some things that we've had to reseed, but overall things are doing really well. We have two kinds of lettuce growing in the garden. They're both doing fantastic. The radishes are doing well. The beets, the turnips are doing really well. Our kohlrabi, I used old seed and I probably should have known better. Probably about 25% of them actually germinated so we're gonna be doing some reseeding there. All of the brassicas are doing really well. So I'm talking about cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and collards. We have all of them under these floating row covers. We did that for pest protection and for some frost protection. They're actually doing, working out really well. The last couple days 
has been super windy. We've had sustained winds of 20 miles an hour plus wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles an hour. And we did have a little bit of trouble keeping them uh, secured down on the ground. So Kevin and I had to make multiple trips into the woods to find rocks, which actually grow here in Missouri. If you didn't know that, rocks are from Missouri. They're all grown here. Uh, we had to bring out several loads with the tractor to line uh, along the bottoms of the floating row covers to keep them secured. Now, even though we had some trouble, once we got enough rocks to hold them down, it's been perfect. Overnight, we didn't have any blow open or anything like that. Uh, so we're still super happy with what they're doing and the plants are growing really well underneath them. Our experiment with the potatoes not digging them way under and hilling them up, but instead piling on top of them with straw. It's working out, and now some of the potatoes are starting to grow up through the straw. Let's take a look. So you can see here's one of the potato shoots that has come up through this straw, and we have several areas where they're coming up like this. Pretty soon, I'm gonna need to add more straw on top so we can basically be hilling with the straw instead of dirt. Uh, I'm so excited that we actually watched the video from Art and Brie when they suggested this and show that it worked for them last year. Uh, we're hoping that this works out really well for us here too. Let's go inside the greenhouse and check out how everything's doing. So everything is looking great. We're going to show you a few things in more depth, but I wanted to show you just in general when you look through the greenhouse, I mean everything is looking great. Uh, we're in the middle of transplanting things out of the plug trays that we start them in and into uh, two and a half inch pots. So in case you're new to our channel, uh, this year we've been picked as growers to actually grow seed for Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. We're growing two different things for them. We're growing a tomato called Dad's Sunset, which is an orange tomato. So we'll be planting one whole row of those in the garden specifically to save for seed. Uh, that's these right here, and you can see that they are looking great. We already have these transplanted into three inch pots. They'll stay in these until they're ready to go out into the garden. Uh, around here, we plant our tomatoes about the uh, second week of May. The other thing that we're growing for Baker Creek is a uh, eggplant. These are called Matoyo eggplant and uh, they also are looking really really good. Uh, egg, eggplant really love warm weather so these will stay in the greenhouse at least as long as the tomatoes maybe even a little bit longer but we're excited to get these out into the garden and be able to grow these for seed as well. It's the time of year for us where we can start seeds like cucumber, zucchini, okra, and we will be starting those in pots for the farmer's market. Now, those do really well, started from seed right in the garden, and it's still too early for that for us. Uh, but you can see that we have some okra plants started here for the farmer's market, and these are actually Black Beauty zucchini. We have some cucumber, like I said, and some other squashes. We're actually starting those on a weekly basis now so that we have several different waves of them available at the farmer's market. If you would like to start some inside in preparation for the summer, I wouldn't plant them inside any longer than three to four weeks before you want to put them in the ground. They grow pretty quickly and they really don't like to be root bound in their pots. The pepper plants are doing so well already. This year I decided to plant those in the house even before I planted tomatoes. Last year our pepper plants seemed to be on the small side when we brought them out to the farmer's market and I wanted them to be bigger this year and I really think that I made the right choice. They're going to look fantastic in the next couple of weeks when our customers start buying them. This year we're offering lots of different colors when it comes to bell peppers. Obviously the standard green bell pepper but also orange, red, yellow and a lilac actually which i'm pretty excited about we do have several different varieties of hot peppers and some banana peppers but they're all doing really well it's going to be a great year for peppers hopefully again 
there's something I'm really excited to show you about that I haven't talked with you about at all. Uh, it was a surprise to me and it's going really well. A few weeks ago, I did a video where I harvested my echinacea roots for medicine. And when I harvested that, I was looking at the roots and I thought, I bet that I could turn these roots into lots of plants and I bet that they would grow just fine. So out of the five plants that I harvested, I broke off individual little tiny baby plants from the little roots and I potted them. And I ended up with 41 echinacea plants and they're doing fantastic. I would say I can tell that at least 90% of them are starting to grow little baby plants and I can't even believe it. I'm so happy. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with all this echinacea because not only do I have 41 of these plants, but I have four other, well, three other varieties that I started from seed and I planted more echinacea purpurea, which is this from seed. I'm just gonna have a ton of echinacea. Hopefully the people in Ava really like echinacea because I'm gonna have a lot to sell. We haven't shown you the goats in a while, so let's head over there and uh, take a look. Well, the goats are doing great. The babies are getting so big. They're actually over by their mama right now and they wanna be by her and not me and that's okay, I guess. So I wanted to give you an update on Princess. A couple months ago, Princess broke her horn off and it was a giant bloody mess. <laughs> We kept her separated from the herd for a while so it could heal, but she's doing great. Look at how well she's doing. She still has a tiny little nub, but she had a full size horn and it broke off. Uh, that is actually the very reason why we disbud our goats. Uh, she had a bad disbudding job. There's nothing we could do about that, but that's why we actually take our baby goats to a lady who is very knowledgeable and is very good at disbudding. And we disbud all of our goats when they're babies. Speaking of babies, uh, we had three of them and two females and one male, and we are actually selling one of the females and the male. We're gonna hold back one of them for our breeding stock. If you're interested in them, please email us at info at livingtraditionshomestead.com. And we'd love to have a conversation about that with you. They'll be available to go home the first week in May. Well, you guys, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for coming with us as we took you around and showed you what's happening on the homestead. Lots of exciting things and summer is just about to start. Lots of big things happening over the summer. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying what you see. Also hit that share button and share our videos and our channel with people you know. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.